Hello, I'm Patrick Smith, the Chief Executive Officer of Brain Love Health. Let me tell you a little bit about Brain Love Health and myself. My background goes back 45 years into the pharmaceutical industry. I spent many years in drug development and research related to Alzheimer's disease and dementia. As a matter of fact, the last 20 years of my career were devoted to that topic. I want to say, and this is a disclaimer, I am not a medical doctor. I am not a PhD. I'm an individual that has personally invested nearly $20 million of my own money not funded by any uh, pharmaceutical company, not funded by any research grants, not funded by any not-for-profit institutions. The money that I spent was my own personal money. And I dedicated that money to find a solution to the problem of dementia and Alzheimer's disease. As all of you are aware, this is a worldwide epidemic. We're basically seeing increases in the rate of dementia and Alzheimer's disease around the world. It's not just Western societies, it's worldwide. It's estimated that probably close to 50 million people are currently suffering with these problems. And it is anticipated that that is going to triple over the next 20 to 30 years. Now, there's lots of reasons for that, and I'm going to talk a little bit about most of the reasons today. But one of the things I want to get across to you is that I have been researching this now for many, many years. Now, sometimes I get criticized because I'm not a doctor or I, I don't, I'm not affiliated with a major research institution like Harvard University or Stanford University or Duke University. That is true. But I do want you to realize that I learned how to read when I was like five years old. And throughout the years, I'm a voracious reader of information, especially about topics that interest me. Now, back in the late 1990s and early 2000s, I became very intrigued by the problem that we had no solutions for Alzheimer's disease. I was very, like, perplexed as to why something that is such a problem worldwide was not getting the attention it needed and that we were finding solutions to help the problem. Well, now that was 25 years ago, and today we still have no solutions for the problem. And so that's what I'm going to talk about today. I, in conjunction with a number of people, derived a theory of Alzheimer's disease and what was driving the process that led to dementia as we entered our 60s, 70s, and 80s. And over the years, we've come to understand that the process actually takes 20 to 25 years to develop. That means the problem starts at some point earlier in your life. Now, that was news to people in the last 20 years as we studied it, that the, that the disease actually started way before you actually had the symptoms. But that was an aha moment for many of us researchers who started to realize that you had to go back to try to find what we call the root cause of what was causing this downward cascade of events. So in early 2000, I formed a company called Voyager Pharmaceutical, and Voyager Pharmaceuticals' primary focus was to understand the underlying problems and associated issues that were driving the Alzheimer's disease process. We uncovered a lot of information and a lot of data. And I'm going to talk about the specifics of what we uncovered because I believe what we learned back in 2000, 2003, 2004, 2005, 2006 that data is as valid today as it was back then, maybe even more so, because now we know that many of the theories that were brought to be in those early days have not panned out. Consequently, I want to refocus the research and data that Voyager Pharmaceutical published 
because I believe it still is the problem of the disease and we can find a solution through that research. So let's talk a little bit about the disease itself. One of the things we've begun to understand is that Alzheimer's disease is multifactorial. That is, it has multiple pathologies that contribute individually to the problem we call Alzheimer's disease and dementia. What are those problems? Well, you've all heard about the old beta amyloid plaque theory. Everybody talks about beta amyloid plaque. As a matter of fact, that's been the pharmaceutical target for the last 20 years, even though it hasn't ever worked. We also talk about tau phosphorylated tangles. That is, the infrastructure of the neuron becomes disassociated and, and starts to block the neuronal connections. We've heard about oxidative stress, which is basically a invasion of free radicals on the neurons of the brain, which then causes things like inflammation. Inflammation is always a bad thing. It's, it's a sign of many chronic diseases. We've also learned over the last few years that glucose metabolism in the brain is a problem. And some people refer to Alzheimer's disease as type 3 diabetes. Although I think each one of those components plays a role. Now, how does that happen over a 20 to 25 year period? You start out from some root cause problem, and then little by little, we start adding things in, like the beta amyloid plaques, the tau phosphorylated protein tangles, the oxidative stress, the inflammation, the glucose metabolism problems. All those things get layered in over a period of time. And at some point in your late 60s, your early 70s, sometimes in your early 80s, you begin to have the symptoms of dementia. And we all know the problem with that. It's a progressive disease. It starts out as a smoking ember and turns into a forest fire over time. So that's the background in which Voyager Pharmaceutical tried to understand what might be the root cause. That is, what is the point where we're starting to see that ember smoke? What's causing that? And I believe I have the answer, and I believe we need to get back to that answer if we're going to solve the problem to begin with. So let me tell you a little bit, little story about how we found that answer. In the early 2000s, in serendipitous discussions with a number of physicians around the country, it was brought to my attention that they were treating patients for prostate cancer, but at the same time, many of their patients had a comorbidity of Alzheimer's disease. And they were providing them with a drug that was to treat their prostate cancer but they observed over a period of time that many of those patients were not progressing in their disease status for Alzheimer's disease. That is, they were arresting where they were, or they were not getting any worse. Now, this was kind of a peculiar thing to hear, but I heard it from a number of different urologists that were treating prostate cancer patients, that their patients seemed to stabilize. Well, that made no sense to any of us. So I started to investigate with some large urology groups around the country and asked them if they would start to pay attention to this specific question. Are they seeing any cessation of the disease in their patients? And after about a year of having discussions with these individuals, they, in fact, reported to me that many of their patients were not losing or they were, they were, they were, they were stabilizing in their progression of the Alzheimer's disease. So that led us to ask a number of questions. What is it about this drug that they're giving these patients that might be doing this? What, what is in the drug that's causing this to happen? Now let's talk a little bit about prostate cancer just for a moment. 
We all know that when we have a prostate cancer problem, they give us this test called a PSA. The PSA measures prosthetic uh, serum antigen. It's a, it's, a, it's a way to see if the prostate is in fact progressing along on its, on, on its cancerous um, trail. So they give this test, and if, if in fact the, the patient's PSA is extremely high, that's a, that would be an indicator that the prostate cancer is beginning to develop and or progress. So they give them a drug that based, and, and oh, let me step back just for a second. Prostate cancer is antagonized by the production of testosterone. That's one of the things they try to eliminate when a patient has prostate cancer is the testosterone in their body. So the way they do that is they give them a drug it's basically called luprolite acetate. It has many brand names. But this drug is what will eliminate the production of testosterone in men with prostate cancer. I might also add that recently you've probably heard stories of, of individuals who are um, working on their transgender kinds of identity issues, and that's the drug they give them to stop them from transitioning through puberty. It will stop the production of estrogen. It will stop the production of testosterone. So this drug's been around a long time, and it's, it's used for various purposes, but its primary focus is to eliminate the production of what we call the sex steroid hormones, testosterone and estrogen. The way it does that is it interrupts the activity of the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis, the HPG axis. And that's the focus of what I want to talk about today, is our research through that serendipitous interaction with the urologist found that by interrupting the activities of the HPG axis, in eliminating the effects of the various hormonal changes that are occurring, you could, in fact, stop the progression of Alzheimer's disease. And I'm going to talk about many of the studies that we did. But what we want to do is focus on one particular study. We began to realize that there was something in that drug that was stopping the activity of the HPG axis, and therefore, which component in that cessation of activity was could be the potential smoking gun for Alzheimer's disease and dementia. Well, what we started to realize is the way the drug works is it shuts down the production of testosterone and estrogen by eliminating what we call gonadotropin-releasing hormone, which is basically a hormone that is secreted by the hippocampus and that is secreted, and then it sends a signal to the, um, to the pituitary gland to produce luteinizing hormone and follicle-stimulating hormone. So think about the brain being the epicenter of producing gonadotropin-releasing hormones, stimulating the pituitary to produce follicle-stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, which in turn then stimulates the ovaries and the testicles to produce estrogen, progesterone, and in men, testosterone. Once the bloodstream has sufficient amounts of testosterone and estrogen, it then signals back to the brain that it's the, the feedback loop is intact. Okay, so this goes on throughout your life. From the point in which you're reproductively viable, this HPG axis is driving the reproductive hormones to produce the eggs and the testosterone for obvious reasons, to keep the species alive and have a reproductive capability in the human species. And it's not just humans, this happens in all mammals. So this HPG axis is disrupted by this drug. So we said, okay, what is it about the HPG axis that could be slowing down the progression of Alzheimer's disease? And we zeroed in on two particular components of that, of that loop, follicle-stimulating hormone 
and luteinizing hormone. We basically looked at and we, we theorized that maybe those two hormones, when they become ineffective by the use of this drug, maybe though one of those two hormones is causing the problems to, of the disease to slow down. So I approached a number of university research teams and we came up with an experiment that we thought might look for ways in which this could be effective. We basically took uh, neuroblastoma cells, which are basically used in neuroscience as neuron substitutes to look at ways in which neurons might behave. And we took those neuronal cells and we put FSH on one and LH on the other. And what we found was astounding. Um, this, this work was done at Case Western University. It was done under the uh, tutelage and research team of George Perry, Mark Smith, Craig Atwood, Gemma Casavetes, Kasave, Kasave, I'm sorry, that name is tough for me to say. But anyway, that team of researchers looked at this particular issue, and what we found was when we put the FSH on the cells, nothing happened. I mean, it was there was nothing happening. When we put the LH on the cells, we started to see them dividing. Not just dividing, but it almost explosive dividing, which was an absolute stunning moment for the entire team. Why is that such a big thing? Because neurons aren't supposed to divide. They're typically differentiated cells. There are some stem cells in the hippocampus that looks like they can create new cells, but in general, the brain, the neurons are differentiated. They're not supposed to divide. So this basically suggested that as we go through andropause and menopause and the HPG axis becomes disrupted. Now, we all know there's changes in menopause and andropause. In women, we know as you stop the producing the eggs, and you start to increase uh, or go through that process, your estrogen goes down. But guess what else is going up, which a lot of people don't recognize, is the luteinizing hormone that stimulated the production of estrogen is going up significantly. Why is that? It's going up because the feedback loop to the brain is creating more gonadotropin releasing hormone, which increases more luteinizing hormone, which is basically trying to maintain the reproductive function and the production of, of eggs from the ovaries. Unfortunately, we reach an age where we're, done, we're running out of eggs, we're not producing the eggs the same way, and consequently what we start to see is luteinizing hormone goes up, up, and up. Now, I've talked about things in the past that relate to hormone replacement therapy. And there's a lot of controversy around hormone replacement therapy. But I want to say today that there is a very specific window where hormone replacement therapy can be beneficial and prevent the downward cascade of events leading to Alzheimer's disease and other dementias. And that critical period is in the perimenopausal phase into the menopausal phase for the first three to five years. Because that's the point in which the luteinizing hormone is rising significantly. It tapers off after a while, after about five years after menopause. But that critical window where the luteinizing hormone is causing neurons to do things they're not supposed to do. Now, that's the point in which I believe um, hormone replacement therapy could be beneficial. It's been tested in el elderly women in their 60s and 70s, but it has not been shown effective as a preventative in dementia. But there is evidence to suggest that if it started early enough at the point in which the LH is peaking, that it will prevent dementia down the road. Now, 
Why am I talking so much about menopause and andropause and eggs and those things? Women get Alzheimer's disease twice as much as men. Consequently, that is a very important topic. And hormone replacement therapy is clearly an important topic for women because women are going through all kinds of changes as they move through that process. As the HPG axis becomes dysregulated, you get mood swings, you get depression, you start to put on extra weight, you can't sleep, you have hot flashes. Those are all hormonal problems that are related to the changes that are occurring. But I want to emphasize those very same changes that are occurring are also what's driving the dementia process, leading to neurons to do things that they're not supposed to do. Now, I spoke about the root cause early on in this discussion. The root cause, I believe, and the data suggests, is that the disease starts 20 to 25 years prior to symptoms occurring. And guess what? Typically, menopause is the triggering point. That's the point in which LH is driving up the process of neuronal division. Now, what happens when differentiated neurons divide? Well, I'm sorry to say, but neurons aren't supposed to divide. And when they do divide or try to divide because they're being stimulated by luteinizing hormone to divide, they get halfway through the division process and then they die. They go through a process we call apoptosis. Now, what else have we discovered? And we have the clinical papers to back this up. We've discovered that it also drives up the processing of A beta um, of precursor proteins. It also drives up the proliferation of beta amyloid plaques. It's also causing mitotic changes in the cells of the brain. And it's also introducing inflammation. So these cell divisions that are occurring in these differentiated cells are driving a process that's leading to all the pathological events that I spoke about earlier. Inflammation, oxidative stress, beta amyloid plaque, mitogenic changes, glucose processing changes. These are all initiated by a root cause of the LH that's occurring because you're going through menopause, the peaking of the LH that's causing the neurons to do things they're not so supposed to do. That's why hormone replacement therapy can actually be beneficial in that time frame because it's going to lower the levels of luteinizing hormone, which are driving the process of dementia and Alzheimer's disease. Now, this data has been around since 2003, 4, and 5. Why hasn't anyone studied it? Well, let me, let me tell you another little story. Back in 2004, 2005, it was theorized that these beta amyloid plaques, which we can see in an autopsy black brain, were the root cause of the disease. So the entire scientific community, and by, by, by entire, I mean 99% of neuroscientists and researchers in the dementia and Alzheimer's field, we're focusing on ways to get rid of the beta amyloid plaque. And so that theory essentially hijacked any other research or promising theories in the field, including the one I just described. The Voyager pharmaceutical theory that the HPG axis was causing the problems and was the root cause of dementia and Alzheimer's disease was completely buried underneath the promise of a beta amyloid drug that could be worth billions and billions and billions of dollars in profits to the pharmaceutical industry, to the research institutes that were getting the grants from the pharmaceutical industry. Everyone's focus was focused on the dollars and ways in which we could eliminate beta amyloid plaque. Well, guess what? In 2023, they found ways to eliminate the beta amyloid plaques, but it does nothing to help cognition. It does nothing 
to stop the progression of the disease. It is a failed theory. And my primary reason for doing this talk today is to get people to realize that it's not the beta amyloid plaques. They come after the, er the erroneous cell division that occurs in the HPG axis in menopause and andropause. So that's my major point today, is to get us to refocus on that research. And if you dig into the LH theory of Alzheimer's disease and dementia, you'll find numerous papers that talk about the science I just explained and the details from a research standpoint that we went through to understand this better. Now remember, I want to emphasize, I'm not a PhD or an MD, so quite often I don't speak like one. But I have been an executive and the CEO of five or six different healthcare companies in my career over 45 years. So I know a lot about this topic and I'm appealing to everybody to understand that if we can find ways to lower the spiking of the LH at the point in which you're going through menopause and later, we will have an answer that will provide a solution to the problem. In conjunction with what we believe in today, exercising, better nutrition, better sleeping habits, those are all showing to be the positive way to treat this disease. And it's the only thing that's shown to be able to treat this disease and prevent it from occurring. So I would like you to join us on our journey. Look at some of the other materials that we put out. You can follow us on Facebook. You can follow us on Instagram. We also have this YouTube channel where we talk about various topics all the time. But my main point today is to get people to focus on the work of Voyager Pharmaceutical back in 2003, 4, and 5, where we identified the root cause of dementia and Alzheimer's disease as being disre dysregulation in the HPG axis as we go through menopause and andropause. I want to thank you for listening. Again, I am Patrick Smith. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of, of Brain Love Health. Have an awesome day.